back to the story or the stories and to think that these weren't fables or fantasies or a fictional story like make-believe it's not make-believe this actually happened and it's uh, so cool um, but uh, we're gonna pick it up I think where we left off or I might mention a couple other things for example the women remember they just they encountered these angels and the, and and imagine have you ever seen an angel have you ever experienced one ah we have experienced angels we just don't realize it um i have an angel uh because the bible says the angel of the lord encamps round about like he he held, he he's standing round about watching protective like a a, a fortress a wall he, he now he's not like a wall but he's there watching and he he does god's bidding and god allows things to happen that you know the angel didn't stop it because god has reasons for things that happen to us but the bible says the angel of the lord encamps around about them that fear him i fear god i respect god i reverence god and so he's he's everything to me and so when you have that you have a promised angel you don't have a promised angel unless you do that by the way and so very very powerful anyway imagine running into one of these guys and God decides to open I mean let them reveal themselves wow well uh, the, by the way I mentioned in a few videos back that I think they uh, probably would have went down they did go down when they met that angel <laughs> they fell down and, 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 and went down on the ground that's typical that happens all the time whenever one anyone uh, not all the time but most of the time you go down you know on the ground when you have a, a full experience of an actual angel manifesting like manifesting himself um so it happened there and and, and i i read it later there's so much in the bible i keep picking up things oh yeah oh yeah or i it, you see more and more you know like i think that's in the book of john where it actually does say they fell down so they did and then he tells them to do what do you remember to go tell my his disciples his followers so remember they scurried out they hurried out they went okay let's go <laughs> hurry up remember i said that anyway and uh full of mixed emotions fear and joy anticipation can't wait to tell the disciples why i'm still like they're still in a state of a bit of trembling and shock because of the unearthly sense of an angel they're from a different world pretty cool and uh, so now what's cool is the timing of God in this. As they're going, Jesus decides, and this is the next passage here, Jesus literally appears before them. Yay! He already appeared before Mary of Magdala, the Mary Magdalene, um, because of John. You put it all together, which we will eventually. And he already did that. And this time he appears bef before all these other women, like the whole crowd of them five others maybe six maybe ten at least five others and so what do you think they did as soon as they ran into jesus Whoop, right down <laughs> uh, because of this sense of this presence of a of a being uh, like this and more on him than the angels you know like what but he uh he's also a combination of human and also spiritual being well we'll get into that some other time but really cool so they actually hold on to him which kind of helps prove that it wasn't a hallucination like they just saw this thing no they touched him you don't touch an invisible you know ghost-like figure or something and later he actually eats some ghost type spiritual type thing or hallucination thing that you're imagining doesn't eat bread and fish and all <laughs> so it says right here uh it says so the women hurried and it says suddenly i love suddenly it's all through the bible <sighs> i love suddenlies god suddenly does this god suddenly does that and god suddenly speaks like he just spoke to jesus it wasn't even the father the holy spirit it spoke to me recently two o'clock in the morning on a tuesday Sp spoke out something about his resurrection R right in right in this chair very cool so suddenly sp jesus met them and that's what happened in my life by the way two, th two thousand years ago <laughs> no that's him back then no um 43 years ago october 5th you know is when i gave my life to christ and i met jesus it was a real subtle but definite real thing when jesus christ came in my life so i love that suddenly suddenly jesus met them and he said greetings uh now this is a greek word usually 
Uh, do you know how Jewish people, Hebrew people, or the Hebrew way form, especially in the Old Testament and, and even in the New, shalom, peace be unto you, prosperity to you, and all that? Uh, but in this case, uh, it was uh, greetings, which is a Greek way of saying, like, hello, or good morning, or maybe, how about this, the actual literal word means rejoice. You rejoice. That's what he's saying. Yeah, <laughs> of course I'm going to rejoice. Like, celebrate, ladies. He didn't say ladies, but woohoo! <laughs> that says greeting. Woohoo! No. He basically said, take joy. Be happy. Look at this. And it also is a form, literally, of, of a greeting. Like, uh, some translations that say, all hail. Like, here, 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 all hail. But anyway, the actual meaning is rejoice, which I think is pretty cool. I think that's the only time it's recorded that that happens, that he says that in that way. Or at least in Matthew. Uh, then they came to him, and they came over closer to him. As soon as they saw him, they came over him, and they held onto his feet. I think that I like that. I think we should hold on to the feet of Jesus. <laughs> like, hang on to him. Cleave to the Lord, the Bible says in the book of Acts. And it says, they came to him and clasped or grasped or held on to his feet. Yeah. I want to hold on to Jesus for all I'm worth. And worshiped him. And that, that word can mean just kneeling down. But I think it's, I think it's suggested there it went beyond just kneeling down, you know, in respect to someone. But it act these glasses. Uh, it actually uh, does, I think, incline to make you feel like they're really worshiping him, like I worship you, Lord Jesus. How about these words? The word adore means to worship. Um, adorable is, is used a lot. I say it too, but I always think, well, I'm not really adoring the person like I adore Jesus. Worship, like it goes deeper than that. And then it says, Jesus said to them, I love it when Jesus speaks listen when Jesus speaks. It says, do not be afraid. Sound familiar? <laughs> like, okay, relax. Don't be afraid, everyone. You know, calm down. <laughs> like, he's looking at him. I love it. And then he says what the, the um, angel said. So it's a, 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 what, what he's doing is confirming what the angel said twice now they're being told that. Actually, three times because he already said it earlier. He, he told the disciples, and I'm pretty sure they may have been around there or heard what was going to happen, that he, go and meet me in Galilee. And so it says right here, uh, go and tell my, this time, this is the time he said brothers. Now, he already mentioned brothers. That word is throughout the, the Matthew, if you remember in our earlier teachings and all. Um, but this is a deeper thing. I, maybe at this point, he didn't say apostles. He certainly meant brothers, meaning more than just the 12. There's a lot of disciples and followers of Jesus, not just the 12 main ones. Of course, now it's 11 main ones because Judas is gone. He's out of the picture and he killed himself. Ugh. All right. So, um, but he literally calls them brothers. And I, I, it clicked in my mind, or it clicks in my mind right away, Hebrews 2.11, where it says he's not ashamed to call us brothers. And if you're a girl, he's not ashamed to call you his sister. Wow. That's eyes, eyebrows raising, jaw dropping, amazing, surprising way of saying it. And it's so amazing that he's, he brought it, he, he, he became man so that he could bring us to God, but he also became man so that he can have an identification and equality with us. There's an equality that he has with God, which means he is God. Equality with human, which means he is human. The man Christ Jesus, First Timothy 2 says. So, and not just a man identifying with man, but we are actually brothers and sisters now. Like, Jesus is my brother. I don't know if you can feel what I'm trying to say through the camera here, but that is so amazingly phenomenal, it's extraordinary to think that Jesus thinks, calls me, and not ashamed to call me his brother, even though I've sinned a lot. He's like, think brother, 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 sister, sister, really close, deep relationships. And it's even more than a fleshly relationship. Jesus said that, if you remember Matthew, I think it's 12, where it says, um, those who do my do the will of my father, I'm not sure if it's 12 or not, but anyway, do the will of my father is, is, is my brothers and sisters and mother-in-law. Wow. Go and tell my brothers. And that kind of, they all kind of re left him, if you think about it. They all 
remember, deserted him at the garden, and they weren't around the cross most of them the whole time. And it, and so he says, go tell my brothers. It's like he didn't even say, my disciples, my followers. He said, my brothers. What an affectionate, loving, sweet term for ones who just kind of went away and scattered and left him. Wow. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee. And as you remember, Galilee is this, this section. If you've been with me for a while, you could probably draw the map too. Um, so he's down in here in Judea and he's talking to them right right, right over there, probably a little east of Jerusalem, maybe in Jerusalem. No, not in Jerusalem. I think they're probably over here, maybe on that side towards Bethany or something on the Mount of Olives. And he talks to them there and he says, he's going to go up here to Galilee region. And uh, so he says, go tell them to meet me here. Okay. Uh, that's where he's wanting him to head. But before he even goes there, he actually, he's, he wants them to plan to go up there, but he also in secret meets them in Jerusalem as well. So it says here, go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. And by the way, it wasn't just one sight, sighting of Jesus. Um, I, I estimate, and I could change this in these videos coming up, 10 at least, at least 10 sites to sightings where he shows himself over and over and the apostles especially got to see him more than others but he he visited others too so 10 to 12 and uh times no 10 to 13 times i've counted some of them could be the same kind of overlap to being the same so you know it, it, uh, at most well i shouldn't say at most because this is what's recorded and it doesn't say this is it does say this is the third time or second but not 13 times so at least that many and maybe a lot more within a 40 day period. But there you go. Um, he's this, he's revealing himself, he's appearing to them. It's all coming to this powerful, powerful, wonderful thing that we can, uh, we can, um, like in my last video talking about justice and judgment, we can avoid the judgment of God that's come on the earth. If you remember, by the way, there was a judgment that God did against Noah and he had him build an ark. Uh, there was a big time judgment against Noah and he, he judged and brought justice to the earth because those people were wicked. And he said, uh, as, a day, as it is in the days of Noah, so much that, uh, when, when Son of Man comes. So it's evil, evil, evil days. And there's a justice and a judgment coming down on, on man again. And so, but... God had mercy on the ones who had faith, who believed by faith Noah built an ark and he came into this ark and his family saving only eight souls and few compared to the many that died. Same thing as today. There's going to be few that shall be saved, Jesus said, and I hope you're among the few that you believe in the cross and the resurrection of Jesus. Give your life to him like Noah did. He wasn't just saying, I believe, I believe there's rain coming. I believe in God and all that's not going to do it. You have to have action behind your faith. Otherwise, your faith is dead. And so uh, there's a justice day coming in the future. It's big, two big time justices. God's had judgments all through the history of mankind. Lots of justice, including everyone dying. Almost everyone, you know, a couple weren't. God gave um, a couple of them exceptions. But uh, as a rule, everyone dies, including the Son of God, Jesus. And, and there's a big time then, there's a big time coming up. And so get your life right with God and believe the scriptures here, the Holy Scriptures that God literally sent someone, Jesus, to die and resurrect. It's the only way that you can get right with God. No other religion has that. You can't get right with God by trying to obey or weigh it in scales and trying to do right. And no, you, your sin's got to be paid for. And either you pay for it or someone else does. And nobody can pay for your sins except God. And that's why Jesus Christ died on the cross. Jesus is God. He died on the cross for you. And there's a judgment day yet to come. There's one in the past, one in the future. So I'll, here's my timeline here. One in the past, way back here, and one in the future where Jesus Christ is going to come back and there's a judgment day coming there. He's going to destroy the earth and all that. And so one by water, one by fire. I'm saying a lot. I know this is a lot, but hey, it's good news that you can get right with God and let Jesus sort of be, in another sense, let Jesus be your ark of safety. I've heard people say something like that. Like Jesus is your ark. Get your life right with him in the floods of fire that's going to destroy the earth around us and all the evil and everything uh, that we can have safety. Isn't that what salvation is? Safe place, a safe place in Jesus Christ. 
Come to Christ. Repent from your sins. Ask, repent means turn from them. Ask God to forgive you. Call on mercy and you will be saved. Amen.